tell me about a typical evening on the commune in like 1970 or 71 around dinner time. Yeah, okay. I guess uh, in my memory, in my mind, uh, we, we were very much like a farm would have looked in the early days of the settlement of this country. Uh, most farms, uh, they couldn't afford a lot of the equipment and so, for example, harvesters would go around crews with a, a with a threshing machine and with a number of teams of horses and wagons and they would bring the, uh, the, the sheaves in and run them through the threshing machine and then dinners would be, you know, communal dinners. There would be a whole lot of people who uh, were uh, working there temporarily and they would be fed by the, the women of the, the household. Our, our commune, people who would visit, you know, we always had a number of visitors that people loved to come and just stay there for a while. And we had this long plank table. It was about 25 feet long. And it would seat uh, about 30 people easily. And uh, we would take turns. Uh, we would take turns cooking. There would be a schedule at the beginning of the week that would work out. And we tried to. Um, we made a conscious effort to try to uh, break down the stereotypes of what's men's work and what's women's work. And so, in the early days, the, everybody everybody signed up either to cook or to do dishes for a couple of times in the week. And uh, I remember cooking these enormous meals. I still can't cook small quantities. <laughs> like, you know, I raised... Thank God. I raised four kids, and uh, plus cooking for those uh, large communal meals. I'll tell Helped you. to raise us, yeah. It was, uh, it was fun. I loved cooking large quantities of food, and I, I, no matter how hard I try to cook small quantities, I always end up with a whole lot left over. I guess I, I'm scared that there won't be enough to go around or something. <laughs> anyway, we had so much stuff that we grew. We had spice, lots of spices in our greenhouse, and uh, we had fresh stuff year round. In the uh, the shoots, you know, that we grew, um, and. We used to buy with one another to see who would come up with the most tasty meals and use the most of our, our homemade food. We had meat from the calf. Every our cow had a calf every year, and we put that calf in the freezer when it was a, a yearling or a year and a half old. We had uh, sheep. We had chickens and turkeys and guinea fowl and uh, geese. So and pigs. We had, and uh, it was uh, really a great lifestyle. I felt so close to nature in those years. We lived right on the uh, Sturgeon River, and we had several canoes. And we used to go canoeing practically every day up the river to Devil's Lake. And uh, in the winter time, sometimes we would uh, clear off the ice and skate on the river. Uh, there was, was a dinner horn that, that was a... Oh yeah, uh, somebody came up with uh, the nozzle from a fire hose and I, I, I had found out that I could blow it like a horn. I used to play a French horn and it was about the same size mouthpiece. Yeah. He, he, I used to blow that horn uh, three times when it was time for dinner and people would come running. Oh yeah, D just a sec, this uh, Star Trek fans uh, Dad reminds me a little bit of Chekhov from Star Trek. You know, the Russians discovered this and the Russians discovered that. I think uh, I think it was probably one of us kids that figured out about the the blowing of the horn. Well, anyway, I don't remember who decided. <laughs> anyway, that. but I was the best horn blower on the commune. Dad was in the top top twenty horn blowers on the commune. Way to go! We had. A